Hello photography buddies, anyone who's been watching this channel for any length of time will know that I particularly like ultra wide angle camera lenses with very bright maximum apertures. Well, Chinese budget manufacturer Mica have just released what is for them an unusually premium lens, this new 10mm f2. It is for mirrorless APS-C cameras, where it gives the full frame equivalent focal length of 15mm, that's definitely an ultra wide angle field of view here. Here's what you'll see if you shoot with the lens on a full frame camera in full frame mode. Actually the lens is giving surprisingly good frame coverage here, which should hopefully mean lower vignetting levels. Well, we'll take a closer look at image quality in a minute. The lens costs 450 US dollars, so it's not cheap, but you are admittedly getting quite a lot of lens for your money here. I'd like to thank Maker for sending me a sample copy of this lens for testing, although it is, as usual, a totally independent review. I'll be snuffling out any weaknesses, as well as its strengths. The lens's build quality is lovely and solid, it feels more substantial and high quality than other Maker lenses I've tested in the past, and at 550 grams, it certainly has a little weight to it. This is a totally manual lens, manual focus, manual aperture, and as you can see here, no electronic contacts for the camera at the rear. There's also no weather sealing gasket to be seen. The lens's aperture ring is at the bottom, and it turns extremely smoothly without any clicks useful for video makers, although for still photography, I much prefer an aperture ring with clicks, so you have a better idea where you're stopping down to when the camera is up to your eye. Then comes the manual focus ring. It too turns extremely smoothly with plenty of precision. Honestly, when shooting at such an extremely wide angle, manually focusing this thing is a cinch. Its rough metallic texture is certainly distinctive to your fingers when using it. A nice feature of the lens is that it doesn't seem to display any breathing as you focus in and out. Again, that is useful for video makers. Usefully, the lens comes with a 77mm filter thread that's incredibly beneficial for landscape photographers and video makers. It also comes with a soft fabric pouch and a plastic lens cap which fits very snugly over the front. Overall, if you're happy to use a manual focus lens, then this is extremely solid build quality, and I love that a filter thread has been included here. Alright, let's take a look at image quality now. I'll be testing the lens on my Sony A5100 with its APS-C sized 24 megapixel sensor. In-camera corrections are not available here. In the middle of the image we see razor sharpness with excellent contrast, straight from the maximum aperture of f2. Move away from the middle a bit, and sharpness gets a bit uneven, although over in the corners it rallies and looks pretty good again. Stop down to f2.8, and the good news is that the lens now displays excellent sharpness from corner to corner, with impressively little colour fringing. Nice! The lens stays this sharp down to f11. Stop down as far as f16, or especially f22, and due to the effect of diffraction, a little softening comes into play. At the end of the day though, apart from the slightly wobbly sharpness in places at f2, this is an excellent performance, certainly the best I've ever seen from a Maker lens. Ok, let's move on and look at vignetting and distortion. The lens projects a strong pinch of barrel distortion right in the corners, and there's just a slightly wavy pattern in the middle also, but I've seen worse than this before. Some darkness is visible in the corners at f2, but it's nowhere near as bad as I was expecting. As I mentioned earlier, that's probably due to the lens's quite generous image circle coverage. Stop down to f2.8 or f4, and those corners brighten up a little. The lens's minimum focus distance is only 30cm, that's quite far really, which is the only disappointing thing about the lens I've found so far. Image quality at that closest distance remains excellent, even at f2, so that's a bit of a silver lining, I suppose. Let's see how the lens works against bright lights. Chinese lenses aren't exactly famous for their optical coatings, but Maker seem to have done something right here, as any kind of flaring is only moderate, and that's helpful on such a wide angle lens, where the sun is going to be getting into your shot quite often. And while we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. Some further good news here is that any kind of coma smearing is very mild, even straight from f2, making this a great option for astrophotography, potentially. Stop down to f2.8 and anything that was there is now gone. Let's zoom out now and look for sun stars, at f5.6 they begin to emerge, and here they are at f8 and f11, at f16 they look spectacular. Finally, 
Bocker. Unfortunately, that long minimum focus distance precludes you from really taking advantage of that maximum aperture of f2 in terms of getting out of focus backgrounds. When you do get a bit of background separation, the backgrounds are a bit busy looking, to be honest. Overall, well, the lens might not be perfect, but it's the best maker option I've ever tested, putting in a strong performance. At its brightest aperture of f2, it's very sharp, although there are some slightly soft patches visible at some points in its images. Stop down to f2.8 though for excellent sharpness through and through. Combined with good contrast, low coma levels, and lowish vignetting and distortion, and you have a very well done lens indeed. I do wish this lens could focus a lot closer to your subject though, but that little niggle aside, considering its excellent parameters and reasonable price, I think this has to be the first mega lens I've tested which has to come highly recommended. I do love wide angle lenses with bright apertures, I'm really impressed with Maker's efforts today. I hope you find my videos helpful, I love putting them together, but they do take considerable time and expense. If you'd like to support my efforts, then check out my Patreon page in the description below, where supporters can get all kinds of exclusive bonus content, as well as early access to reviews that I'm making. Take care, everyone.